Now you'll see the working of narrow band pass filter. The specifications are the cutoff center frequency is 10 kilohertz. The voltage gain happens to be 10 volt, and Q factor is 3. Now since the voltage gain is taken as 10 volt, so we have to adjust the input voltage such that the output even at the pass band even at that uh, center frequency is not going to a saturated value suppose if I apply as in the case of uh, low pass filter and high pass filter 5 volt peak to peak we'll end up with since the gain is 10 we'll going to end up with 50 volt peak to peak as my output voltage which will be a distorted waveform so we'll adjust the input voltage such that it is just 2 volts so that my output is within 20 volt peak to peak which happens to be a distortional waveform so before we see what is the output waveform we know that we are designed for 10 volt let us see the output waveform also now let us first verify whether the gain is coming out to be 10 at that particular frequency of f not at 10 kilohertz so first verify we'll verify whether the cutoff frequency sorry the center frequency is coming out to be 10 kilohertz or not to do that so in this narrow band pass filter at exactly center frequency the input and output waveforms will be away by 180 degree out of phase so we can easily make out that again by using that x y i a so you can see now there is some gain the input voltage is 0.5 into around 4 volts the output is how much so this is my output which is coming out to be one 3 3 into 2 so it's around 6 volt so we are certainly having some gain but we need to have a gain of 10 at f not of 10 kilohertz so first let us verify whether at cutoff frequency sorry at the center frequency of f not is equal to 10 kilohertz we are getting a gain of 10 or not to identify the center frequency f not let us again go to x y i a and you can just see when they are exactly out of phase you can again identify that center point by grounding both of them and putting it as the so you can just release this one now you can see whenever they are exactly out of phase by 180 degree we will going to end up with a perfect line you can see now this is now you can just go back and see their waveforms you can see they will be totally exactly out of phase by 180 degree you can see the negative peak is touching the positive peak of the input waveform so this ensures that there is a 180 degree phase shift so if you slightly vary this one from 10.5 which is there on this one we can exactly know what is the frequency from DSO which happens to be 10.77 kilohertz so that's my F naught now let us just slightly vary this frequency and see whether can I able to make out whether I, it is there at the exact center frequency or not now in this waveform we are unable to make out whether it is there at f naught or not so in order to clearly verify whether it is f naught or not you again go for x y you can see it is slightly opened up so you always make this to come as a straight line even if you slightly open this up you can see still it is there is some slight difference you can still adjust the frequency so that it becomes a straight line now you can see it's a perfect straight line now here you can see whatever the amplitude of this one so whereas in case of high pass and low pass filter we ensure that the amplitudes are there in the same multiplication whereas in this case of narrow band pass filter they can be at a different point ensure that it's a straight line so once it is there in the straight line we will end up with exactly 180 degree out of phase signal as you can see from this so this exactly the 180 degree out of phase signal now here we should get a gain of around 10 so let us first find what are the center frequency of this narrow band pass filter which is on your DSO happens to be 10.757 kilohertz so I can take a reading corresponding to that frequency as 10.75 kilohertz so this is my f naught center frequency of 
the low pass sorry the band pass filter narrow band pass filter which is my peak reading so this corresponds to if not so let us first find out what is the output voltage we will just verify whether the gain is the input voltage is 4 divisions into okay, let us make it 4 divisions it is a 4 divisions let us just verify what the output voltage output voltage is it's coming out to be 7.6 now it is 7.6 into 2 and the input voltage was 2 volt peak to peak we just verify what is the gain so it happens to be 7.6 now we are having the gain as 7.6 into 2 by 2 which is approximate which is equal to 7.6 ratio happens to be 7.6 we are designed for 10 okay this is there because of some tolerance of the RNCs of your circuit so we are through with the center frequency which was supposed to be 10 kilohertz we are getting it as 10.75 kilohertz that's my first reading next we need to find what is the Q factor to find the Q factor I need to know the bandwidth so we know that Q is equal to F naught by bandwidth so q was sorry f naught was found out to be 10.75 kilohertz we need to find what is bandwidth so in order to find the bandwidth we'll just take two readings on either side of f naught where my output voltage is 0.707 times the maximum voltage so we are having maximum voltages around 15.2 volts you identify one frequency above f naught and one frequency below F naught so their magnitude should be 15.2 into 0.707 so this comes out to be around 15. so this should be I'm supposed to get a output voltage of 10.74 volts on either side of this so let us adjust the frequency is such that at the output I'm having 10.7 so you first have to have a output voltage of 10.7 volts so I need to have approximately 5.1 division Meanwhile, you ensure that input voltage is there constant at 2 volts. So it has slightly I'll adjust input frequency such that output is 10.7 volt keeping the input voltage as 2 volt peak to peak ok input is there at 2 volt peak to peak I'll just vary the frequency so that you can see now it's approximately around it's 5.5 divisions which happens to be almost close to 10.7 volts now we can just find the frequency frequency happens to be 8.6 kilohertz so one of the frequency is 8.6 kilohertz so so one frequency on one side of F0 happens to be 10 8.6 kilohertz we'll just go on the other side of F0 and find out at what frequency it becomes again 10 point four. it is approximately 10.7 volts now the frequency is around 12 point 
0.799 which we can approximate as 12.8 kilohertz this is 12.8 kilohertz now we can find the bandwidth so bandwidth happens to be f1 minus f2 which happens to be four point two kilohertz four point two kilohertz so the Q of the circuit becomes two point five five so we are having the Q of the filter happening to be two point five five we first took the frequency corresponding to F0 as 10.75 we took a reading slightly reducing the frequency which happens to be frequency corresponding to 3 dB down which is exactly 10.74 volts so which was found out to be 8.6 on the other side we went and just found out the frequency F1 which is 12.8 kilohertz so from this we can find what is the center frequency and the Q factor for the completeness of the circuit sorry the plot you can take few more readings here before F2 and you can take few more readings after F1 so that we can plot a, a smooth graph of a bandpass filter so we can know what is F0 and we can find what is the bandwidth from which we can find what is the Q factor so Q factor happens to be 2.55 so we have designed the Q bandpass filter for a Q factor of 3 we are getting it as 2.55